Hey, welcome to In the Growth Space. I'm David and I'm your host. Uh, really happy to be with you here again today and grateful that you've shared uh, some time with me today. So here on the podcast, I like to have conversations with people who really stretch our thinking and, and help us to get into what I like to call our growth space. And that space is where our learning and our growing and maybe even um, being just a little bit uncomfortable happens. And, and so today in, in this episode, I thought what I do is, is keep myself in my own growth space by doing another solo episode. You know, these episodes where I'm just sharing from my, my own thoughts and my heart um, are really not as easy as the ones with guests. Um, but I have to say, I've really been enjoying sharing some of my own thoughts and, and some of my own um, thinking about what's been coming up for me and what's been coming up for some of my clients and some of the, the things that are happening um, even within some of my um, inner circle groups. So today, what I thought I'd do is I'd share some. Uh, I thought I'd share some thoughts with you on a subject that I think is really incredibly important as a leader, um, and and it's it's important for every leader. I don't care where you are in any organization, it's really important because what I'm going to explore is self leadership, and self leadership I believe is one of the most important things that a leader can do. Because And it's probably one of the hardest things a leader can do as well, because leading yourself really is one of the hardest jobs uh, in, in, in leadership. And so when, when we take a look at, at, at exploring what self-leadership is, um, we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to develop it and maybe even some commonly overlooked aspects of self-leadership. And, and one of the reasons why I wanted to jump into this leadership topic is really because it's, it's one that comes up time and time again. And, and it comes up within the context of my inner circle groups. It comes up in context with uh, my individual coaching clients. And, and as I said earlier, you know, self-leadership is a critical skill that every individual has to possess. And they, ha they, they need it in their personal lives and they also need it in their professional lives. But what does that really mean? What does self-leadership really mean and, and how do we develop it? So I'm going to start with the, the, the definition of self-leadership. And, and, and really, at its heart, it's the ability to take responsibility for your own actions and then make decisions that align with your, your values and your goals. And, and you do that in order to motivate yourself to achieve those goals. And really, it's the practice of intentionally influencing your thoughts influencing your emotions and your behaviors so that you can achieve the, the outcomes that you, you desire. And, you know, self-leadership isn't about controlling others. And, and you know, <laughs> any kind of leadership, at, for, for that matter, is not about controlling others. It really is all about controlling yourself. All right, so let's dive into the practical steps that you can take to develop self-leadership. The first step, I think, that you have to do um, in, in order to practice self-leadership is to clarify your goals and your values. I, I think to, to become an, an effective self-leader, it really is essential to have a clear understanding of, of what your own values are and, and, and your goals and, 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 and to be able to take time to reflect on what's most important to you and really what you want to achieve. And then once you have a clear idea of your values and your goals, then you can align your behaviors with those, those, um, those values and goals. And, and you can also align your decisions with them. And when you have a clear understanding of your values and goals, those decisions are easier to make because, well, I shouldn't say they're easier to make, but, but you can see when they're in alignment and when they're not in alignment with uh, with those with those values and goals, and and it, and when you when you clarify those uh, values and goals, you also can avoid getting sidetracked um, because when you're reviewing them often and you're you're seeing your values and you're seeing your goals, um, you get you you avoid getting sidetracked by dis, by distractions and and external pressures. And let's face it, in today's environment, external um, <laughs> external distractions are incredibly easy <laughs> to, to, to be exposed to and to give into. So 
let me take a step back though for just a moment and, and talk a little bit about what do we exactly mean by values and goals. So values really are the principles and beliefs that, that guide our behavior and the, they, they guide our decision making. They're the things that are most important to you and the things that you hold most dear. And so some examples of values might include honesty, um, they might include integrity or kindness or, or maybe even personal growth. If you're listening to this podcast, probably is personal growth. Uh, you value that. And, and when, you, when you clarify those values, you, you get that a, a, you know, deeper understanding and a better understanding on what drives you and what you stand for and really what your purpose is. And the distinction then on goals, um, the goals really are more of a specific outcome. It's a specific outcome that you want to achieve. And they're really the tangible steps that you take towards realizing your values. Or really, I feel like to think of it this way, it's, it's, it's the way you're living out your values. You know, goals can be short term. They could be just completing a project by a certain deadline. And that, that, that deadline might be in the short term. And goals can also be long term. And maybe those long term goals are, you know, things like starting your own business or, you know, I don't know, be, being uh, fluent in a foreign language. But when you clarify those, when you clarify your values and your goals, um, you've got to be specific about what they are and be be as concrete as possible, especially when it comes to values. I, I, I like to say that, especially in the culture work that I do, is I like to ask leaders, when you see someone living out their values, what do you see? What's the behavior? What's that specific behavior that you see? Is it something like, practicing blameless problem solving? Is it something like getting clear on expectations? Is it something like listening generously or speaking straight? Um, you know, you have to be very specific. And so instead of saying, I want to be successful, try to define what success means to you. So begin with the end in mind. What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? Um, and, and when you do that, you're going to get more specific on what that what that goal is, you know, is, is it financial success? Is it is it career advancement? Is it some kind of personal fulfillment by achieving a certain uh, a, a certain benchmark? Whatever it is, just be specific about what you're striving for. And let, let me give you, I guess, some ideas on how to clarify the, your values and your goals. And I I think it's probably obvious but I want to make sure that I spell out the obvious. And, and that is set aside time for reflection. Um, I, I, this is such a, a, a key component of, of how to do this, how to, how to clarify your values and your goals. If you don't set aside time to reflect on something like this and carve out dedicated time to, to think about what, what matters most to you and, and really what you want to achieve, you're not going to achieve it and you're not going to be very specific and, and you won't have clarity on, on your values and goals. And, and what I find is a lot of leaders aren't going to do this because they have this belief that slowing down to think isn't being productive. But let me say this, this is the work. This is what leaders who are good at self-leadership do. They stop, they slow down, they reflect, and get clear on what their values are, what their goals are, what the vision of the future is for themselves. And, and they reflect on their experiences and they, they learn from them. And you know, the, a lot of times this could be through journaling or could be through just a practice of meditation or maybe even simply just going for a walk and letting your thoughts wander. And, and one of the things that I, I like to do when I get out in nature and, and, and hike and walk is uh, to, to just have a, um, a voice recorder uh, by me. You know, I, I take my phone and I'll get my voice recorder ready just in case something hits me because when I get out into nature, it allows my mind the space to to wander and to think and to consider the lessons that I'm learning and 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 really I get to do two things at once. I get to take care of my body by exercising and then I also get to do some reflecting. So it's kind of like a two for one. <laughs> um, and and so you know 
get yourself out into nature. Give yourself some space to be able to to think and to um, allow your mind to, to wander. Um, the, the second thing that you want to do, too, is you, you want to ask yourself some probing questions. And here are some questions that maybe will get you started um, and things that you might ask yourself. Um, for example, what motivates me? What gets me up in the morning? What makes me feel fulfilled? What are my core beliefs and principles? Where do I feel that I'm behaving in alignment with what I believe? And what are my strengths? And what are my weaknesses? Maybe what am I doing when I feel most energized? Those are some, some questions that if you ask yourself those questions and, and maybe journal on one or two of them and, and really get some clarity on you know, what, what, those, what the answers to those questions are, that's going to deliver to you a, 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 a clarity around what you value and what you value most. And when you, when you get some clarity on that, when you get some clarity on your values and your goals, make sure that you write them down, specifically your goals. But I, I, I like to also write down my values as well and make sure that you're, you're getting them on paper. Um, and, and you've heard me talk a lot about journaling. And I can't stress enough how much journaling is a part of the creative process. And so I just want to encourage you, once you get some clarity on your vision or your values and your goals, um, make sure you put those down on paper. And, and I like to use pen and paper, not, not computer. Uh, may, maybe once you write them down hand to, to, to paper and pen to paper, you can put them on a computer, but there's something magical about taking an idea that God gives you in your mind and putting it onto paper. And when you do that, it just helps you to solidify them and it helps you to, to see them and keep them top of mind. And um, you might even create a, a vision board to, to, to be able to see them in a visual, uh, a visual way. Um, you, you can also use visualization techniques. You know, athletes use visualization all the time to really help, help them stay uh, focused on their goals, yes, but also then in tune with what they need to be doing in order to um, move themselves forward in the pursuit of their goals and in pursuit of the mastery of, of whatever uh, athletic endeavor they're, they're into. And, you know, one of the tools that I per personally use is um, the full focus planner. And it's, it's a, it's a, a paper-based uh, planner um, that has a, a process built in where every quarter uh, I, I take a quarterly review and preview. So a review of the previous quarter that just completed and then a preview of the one that's just coming up. And in that process, I write out my goals every quarter. I, I write them physically in my planner. And uh, when, I, when I write them in my, my planner, it really helps me and, and reminds me um, what, I've, what I'm going after. And then as part of my weekly review and preview, I regularly go back and, and read my goals and I look at them. Um, and, and that way I'm constantly reminded of them. So keeping them top of mind really helps me to act in a way that's going to help me to take action towards them and stay focused on, on my goals. One of the other things that I can recommend too is just to to revisit and revise them regularly. Sometimes your goals, you know, even though you may be pursuing them, you may find that that at the end of the day, it's not something that that really um, lights you up. Um, you you get into it and you think, really, this isn't the goal. Maybe it's something else. Um, y your goals can change, and that's okay if if you if you want to change your goals. Don't, don't feel so locked into your goals that, that you never change them because um, having, having goals that, that alter and change, you, you, may, you may get you know, new insights as you grow and as you develop. So it's, it's important to um, revisit your, your goals periodically and make those updates as necessary. Don't be afraid to adjust your course if you if you really see that your goals aren't really aligning with your values or even, you know, sometimes when you achieve what you set out to do, you need to alter course and, and maybe take a look at what's next. 
And one of the things that I'm realizing right now, quite honestly, is just that there are different seasons of our lives and um, different seasons of our lives create different things that we value and um, different different ways we want to change. And, and so it's important to recognize what season of life we're in. And that way you can be sure that your goals and, 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 and values are in alignment with, with that season of your life. So, so clarifying your values and goals is, is really that crucial step towards developing self-leadership. And when you have that clear understanding of what you stand for and what you want to achieve, then you can make those decisions and, and take action with purpose and intention. So take the time to reflect, take the time to journal, create your values, your goals, be specific, concrete, and revisit and revise them regularly. That way you can, can stay on track. So the second way to develop um, self-leadership is to develop self-awareness. <laughs> and this is really a crucial um, self-leadership um, skill. It really is the ability to recognize and understand your own emotions, your own thoughts, and your own behaviors, and really to um, to 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 understand and almost take a step back and and view yourself um, almost as a as a third party or or kind of from a distance. One way that you can do that to develop the self awareness is to to practice mindfulness or you know, maybe through a meditation practice or, or through journaling. Um, these practices can help you become more tuned into your internal states and, and really help you to be a, 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 a better decision maker, making you know, conscious decisions. And um, it really is a way that you can understand your thoughts and your feelings. And it's, it's the ability to um, maybe even just kind of step back and observe yourself from a more objective perspective without any kind of judgment or, or bias. And when, you're, when you have that self-awareness, you're really better able to uh, identify your strengths and your weaknesses and, and manage your emotions. And, and then again, make, a, make decisions that align with your, your values and your goals. So how do you do that? You know, I, I talked about a, a couple of, of ways, you know, practice mindfulness and, and really all mindfulness is, is just being present and fully engaged in the moment. And it, it, it involves just paying attention to your thoughts and your feelings and your physical sensations without any judgment, just, just noticing those. And in today's world, it's so easy to get distracted and I mean, our world, I think, is just distraction all over the place. But by practicing mindfulness, you can really get in tune with yourself and become more aware of your own thoughts and your own emotions and, 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 and how they influence your behavior. Another way to do this, to gain this, this self-awareness, is to get feedback from other people. And, and you can ask people that you trust, um, people that are closest to you, that will give you honest feedback um, feedback on your strengths and, and feedback on what maybe some of your weaknesses are if you're, if you're not sure of what those are. Um, and, and, and people that can do this it could be, you know, at work, it could be your manager, uh, could be a mentor, could be a friend, could be a family member. Um, I, I tend to stay away from family members because they're, sometimes they're too close to you. But somebody who's close enough to see you, see your strengths, to even see your weaknesses, um, get some feedback from them and then listen to their feedback without becoming defensive or, or dismissive. Make sure you're um, using their insights to identify areas for growth and improvement. Another way to gain self-awareness, uh, I, I talked about it earlier, is, is to keep a journal. Um, writing in a journal is just a great way to process your thoughts and to process your, your feelings and and getting some insight into your own behavior, just to kind of get them out onto paper. It's amazing what happens when you, your, your thoughts come out of your body or out of your mind and through your body and onto a piece of paper through a pen. Um, when you're as honest as, as you possibly can be and, and as reflective as possible, um, those, those, those insights are just invaluable. It, it gives you the ability to really identify patterns or recurring themes as you look at your writing and go, go back over it. 
and it gives you a better understanding of yourself. Another way you can get this self-awareness is to take personality tests. Um, per personality tests such as, you know, like Myers-Briggs, um, the Enneagram, DISC, all, uh, you know, a predictive index, all of those can give you insight into um, your, your own behavior and, 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 and what comes naturally to you. Um, however, I, I would say that while these tests um, shouldn't be the, the, the sole basis for your self-awareness, they can be a, a useful tool for, for just self-reflection and, and growth and understanding. And, and oftentimes too, by taking these assessments, you can see some tendencies. Um, but, but one caution I have for these assessments is your personality is not permanent. So um, there, there's a great book uh, by Dr. Benjamin Hardy, who, and it's just called Personality Isn't per Is Not Permanent. And he, he goes through the science of, of how personality can change. And so um, don't get your identity wrapped around your, 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 your personality. So that's just something that I caution you around. But the, the last thing to, to gain the self-awareness is just seek out new experiences. I mean, trying new things can help you to, to get new perspectives and new insights into yourself, into your behavior, into your thinking. And whether that's traveling to a new place or maybe taking up a new hobby or, or volunteering for a cause that you care about, just by stepping outside of your comfort zone, you can discover new aspects of yourself and, and new, new aspects of, of who you are as a person. So just to kind of give you a little recap, you know, by, by practicing mindfulness, getting feedback from other people, uh, keeping a journal, taking some personality assessments, um, seeking new experiences, all of these things can give you a deeper understanding of your thoughts, your feelings, and your behaviors. And you're going to gain that, that self-awareness. Um, and with self-awareness, then you can make more informed decisions and lead yourself towards that, that vision of success that you have. So it gives you that self-leadership. The next thing uh, that I'll say is to take action uh, because taking action is really the, that, that tool that turns your values and goals into uh, concrete, uh, achievable steps. And it's going to move you closer to that vision of your, of your desired outcome. You know, and I think you know this. I mean, everybody probably knows this, but without actions, your values and, and your goals are, are nothing more than just ideas or aspirations. And so let me give you just a couple of strategies to, to take action towards your goals. I think the first thing is to, to make sure that you break your, your goals down and, and, and look at um, just little steps and, and, and rather than taking a look at the whole picture, break down that goal into smaller achievable steps. I, I, I know that you've probably heard this before, but really a small step is, is better than no step. And, and I teach this, this idea at, at Turning Point around the Henry David Thoreau quote. And that quote begins, if one advances in the direction of their dreams. And, and he doesn't say that we have to know all the steps. We simply need to advance and we simply need to take a step. But if you can map out a few steps, maybe just a couple of steps even, rather than figuring out all of them, this helps you to create at least a start of a roadmap for achieving your goal and, and it makes it less overwhelming. So each time you achieve one of these smaller steps, it can then give you a sense of progress and momentum and then you can take the next step and then the next step will appear and, and you can take that one and then the next and the next. Now, the next thing I can say too around this whole idea of breaking down your goals and, and moving towards uh, t just taking action is, is setting some deadlines. I, I know that there is um, a, a principle of, of constraints that, that deadlines are going to help give you a sense of urgency and it, you're going to get a heck of a lot more done when you have a deadline that you're going to be accountable for and 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 you're going to um, achieve your goals more when you have a sense of urgency um, make sure though that you're realistic with your deadlines and make sure that you know they're they are achievable but also push you to some to, to take some action because that's a fine line there. You want to have something that's achievable, but you also want to stretch yourself as well. 
Uh, the next thing I can share too is just to prioritize. Um, not all actions are equal. So prior to prioritize the, the, the actions that are going to have the biggest impact on achieving your goals. Focus on the tasks that are most important and, and align with your values and just take them. And, and, and even if you don't realize or know what, you know, which ones are going to have the biggest impact, just take a step. As I said earlier, take a step. The, the, the next thing I'll say is to just get organized. Um, this is a struggle for me. I, I, I am in a constant state of helping myself to get organized and to be organized. But being organized can help you be a lot more productive. I recently just kind of redid my, my desktop, cleared my desktop, got a, a kind of a desktop organizer thing here that I've got. I can, I can write little notes on. Um, but, but being organized helps you to be more effective and more efficient in your actions. Um, and, and, and when you, when you do that, you can have a little bit more clarity around what, what's the next step and, and, and breaking down your, your, your goals into those chunks, chunks gives you maybe even a system of, you know, how to keep track of what needs done and what, um, what steps are next, whether you use maybe like a planner, uh, like I do with my full focus planner, uh, a Trello board, I use Trello as well. Um, just to keep a list of, of what you're doing and what you need to do and being organized will, will keep you on track. So one more thing that I'll say is to be flexible. You know, life is unpredictable and you have to adjust uh, along the way. This one, I have to say, is really hard for me. <laughs> I'm getting better. As I get older, I'm getting better. But be open to changes and be willing to adapt when you, when you need to. You know, that change is oftentimes uncomfortable. It, it's not often, it's usually uncomfortable. But taking action is really the only way that you're going you're gonna to achieve your goals and, and, and really lean into um, your, your values and live out your values. So, so lean into that discomfort, um, take action, even when you feel uncertain. And, um, you know, one, one, I guess maybe tip uh, or, or let's just say one of the things that I've done, uh, to condition myself to, to be uncomfortable, uh, or, or I like to say actually being comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> and, and one way I've done this for myself is, you know, doing the cold shower thing, kind of like the cold plunge. And I have to say that, you know, in the wintertime, especially the water temperature here in Pittsburgh is, is 46 degrees, especially when it's, when it's, it's cold outside, it, it gets really cold. And, and when it's below freezing outside, it's, it's not comfortable getting in that really cold shower, <laughs> but I've trained my body to just endure the, those long periods of, you know, the, the, the cold exposure. And I also trained my body to endure long periods of a higher heart rate when I was training for triathlons and I'd go on training rides or, or runs that kept my heart rate elevated so that I could stimulate, um, that, you know, that, that discomfort that I would experience during an event. And so, um, whatever you do, just get yourself ready to be uncomfortable. You know, em Emerson has, has famously said, he has a quote that says, do the thing, then you'll get the energy to do the thing. And, and I got to tell you, I face this nearly every day when I get ready to work out. Um, so just go do the thing, <laughs> take action. This really is a, a critical step in developing self-leadership. So, so break down your goals into achievable steps, set deadlines, prioritize, Get organized, be flexible, and 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 be comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, all of those things are going to really help you achieve and and become the leader of your own life, and 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 really be a better self leader. So in this last little section here, let me just explore some of the commonly overlooked aspects of self leadership. The first aspect that probably is, is, is overlooked an awful lot is self-compassion. And it really is all about practicing treating yourself with kindness and treating yourself with understanding, especially when you make mistakes or when you experience setbacks. So many people focus on self-criticism instead of self-compassion. 
And that can lead to burnout and it can lead to a lot of negative self-talk. And, and just remember that self-compassion is not self-indulgence. It's really, it's, it's really about treating yourself with the same kind of kindness and understanding that you, you would show a friend. So self-compassion involves treating yourself with the kindness and care and understanding that you'd offer a good friend um, that might be struggling. It means acknowledging your mistakes, acknowledging your shortcomings, but without judgment or criticism and responding your, to yourself um, with, with warmth and empathy. And, and let me just give you a couple of, of strategies to, to do that. So practice positive self-talk because the way you talk to yourself, it has a big impact on your self-compassion. Really pay attention to when you're speaking to yourself in a negative or, or critical way. And try to reframe those thoughts in a more compassionate way. Take a, take a, a moment, take a pause and, and reframe what you're saying. So instead of saying, you know, I'm so stupid for making that mistake or I'm so stupid, I should have seen that coming. Try saying to yourself, hey, it's okay to make mistakes. I'll learn from this and I'll do better next time. And, and ask yourself questions like, you know, what could I learn from this? What, what, what can I learn from this that'll help me in the future? And another overlooked uh, practice, I think, is, is practicing mindfulness. I said, I talked about this earlier, um, but, but becoming more aware of your thoughts and feelings is so important to becoming, um, you know, a, a better self-leader, uh, you know, and, and, and better, a better skill of self-leadership. Um, really the leaders who practice this, they're more capable of, of really managing their emotions. They have a higher emotional intelligence. So when you n notice those negative thoughts, you know, try to observe them, try to not judge them, but just recognize that it's a normal experience to, to have these difficult emotions and they don't necessarily have to lead you to, to behave in a, in a way that isn't in alignment then with your goals and your values. The next thing I would say is, is just practice forgiving yourself. You know, this is a hard one as well. Just holding on to your past mistakes and regrets can really hold you back and, and keep you from moving forward in, in achieving your goals and, and practicing um, your, your forgiveness is, of yourself is, is, is really going to be a, a way that you can treat yourself with compassion and, and treat yourself with understanding. Uh, recognize that everybody makes mistakes. Look, we are, we are imperfect human beings and, you know, everybody makes mistakes, but this is the way we learn. We're, we're, we're all, all, um, perfectly created, imperfect human beings. So extend yourself some grace. Last thing I'll say here too, is just to practice some self-care. I, I know this is kind of a buzzword, uh, lately, but, but taking care of yourself, um, it really is a form of self-compassion. You know, make sure that you you prioritize activities that make you feel good, such as exercise and, and eating healthy and getting enough sleep and, and spending some time with people that you love. Self-care can really help you to feel more confident and, and capable. Um, and, and that can, you know, lead you to greater self-compassion. And I really believe that self-compassion is such an important aspect of self you know, self-leadership. And one of the ways that you can practice that self-compassion, I, I talked about it just a moment ago, is, is self-care. And, and self-care really is all about your, your physical body. And, 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 you know, one of the things that I would, sec, you know, recommend is um, to, to, to practice the self-care is really prioritizing your sleep. I, I don't care what Anybody says, you know, you hear these macho dudes saying, you know, just, you know, grind until your eyeballs bleed and, you know, you'll sleep when you're dead. And I just got to say that if you say you'll sleep when you're dead, you're going to be dead sooner than, than you think. So please don't buy into that idea that you'll sleep when you die. <laughs> the, the reality is that you just may die a heck of a lot earlier than you would like to if you don't prioritize sleep. So um, prioritize your sleep and our bodies are not machines and, and they do need regular rest so that we can, you know, operate at our, at our optimal level. So make sure that you get enough sleep every night.
And this one is is really dear to me, exercising regularly. If, if you know anything about me at all, this one is right at the top of my list. I, I, I came to the awareness at an early age that regular exercise is going to reduce my stress. It's going to improve my mood. It's going to boost my overall health. And I would just say, find a form of exercise that you enjoy. You don't have to do triathlons. You don't have to do mar- marathons. You don't have to do anything that's, you know, some extreme, you know, sport. Um, but just go walk, you know, do it regularly, take a walk, a vigorous walk, get out of breath. And, 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 you know, like, like I said, if you don't like running, don't do that. <laughs> Find what you enjoy doing and do that for your exercise. The last thing I'll say here too, in, in this self care is eat a balanced diet. Um, you know, e- eating a balanced diet that has, you know, whole foods and, and, and better, um, nutrition is going to improve your mood. It's going to support your overall health. Um, and and I, I'll say, even as I say this, you know, I am definitely not perfect at this, but I really do make it a priority. And one of the things that I did when I began my health journey was um, I, I cut out all the soft drinks that I was drinking. I, I used to drink Pepsi all the time. And uh, all that is, is just extra sugar. <laughs> and and, and I, I will have to say too, this is a pet peeve of mine, any of those diet versions of, you know, Pepsi, Coke, Sprite, whatever, um, they're all filled with chemicals that are not good for your body. <laughs> so what do I recommend? Water. I know, you know, boring, but drink water. I always have a, a, a bottle nearby. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to notice, notice that it's within a, a, an arm's length from me away. You know, I always have my bottle of water with me. So, so focus on, on eating, you know, plenty of fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, healthy fats, um, drink lots of water uh, and make sure that you don't think of going on a diet, but thinking of your diet as a way of life, as a, as, as a lifestyle. All right. One last thing here um, that that's often overlooked, and, and that is um, learning and growth. Self-leadership really involves a commitment to ongoing learning and, and, and ongoing growth. So seek out opportunities for personal and professional development. Go to, you know, go to workshops, go to join masterminds, challenge yourself, step outside of your comfort zone and, and get around people that um, will help you to grow. Find opportunities for learning and growth and, and, and find opportunities to be around people that won't allow you to give up. Find people that will help you to be committed um, to continually improving and, and continually developing and continually growing. And, and really when you focus on learning and growth, you're going to challenge yourself to expand your knowledge and, and expand your skills and your abilities to take on new challenges. And one of the best ways I think that you can do this is to um, get a, either get a coach or join a mastermind, join one of my inner circle groups. Um, it's just a way to be able to get around other people and, 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 and help you to continually expand your mind and, and expand um, your, your skill set. And you can also, you know, invest in things like, like books. That's a, it's a cheap way to, to get access to the author's experiences, podcasts, um, workshops, anything that you can do to invest in yourself is going to help you to continue to grow, continue to help you to stay relevant and, and really be um, transforming on a continual basis. And, and one last thing I'll say here is that, you know, transformation begins with the transaction. Where your money goes, your energy and focus flows. And so stay invested in yourself. All right. So to sum up, um, I, this has actually gotten to be a little bit longer episode than I thought, but uh, I'm, 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 I'm flowing here. <laughs> and um, to, to, to sum up, let me just say that um, self-leadership really is the practice of intentionally influencing your thoughts, your emotions, your behaviors, so that you can achieve your desired outcomes. And, and really to develop your, your self-leadership, you've got to clarify your values, you've got to clarify your goals, develop self-awareness, and take action. And remember to make sure that you also prioritize self-compassion, self-care, and ongoing learning and growth. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast episode on, on self-leadership. And I hope that this helps you to grow in your, your own growth journey. 
And, and before uh, you go, what is the one thing that you will do in order to take action on growing your own self-leadership? What's one thing that you can take away from today? How are you going to implement something that you heard here today? I'd love to know about it. Send me a note, um, david at davidmcglennon.com and, and make sure that you uh, forward this episode to a friend who you think might benefit from it as well. I appreciate you uh, watching here on YouTube or if you're listening just to any uh, the, the podcast on any of the platforms, I really appreciate you uh, sharing time with me today. So uh, until next time, be sure to stay in your own growth space and be well. Mm-hmm.